Kia ora, good evening, welcome to the Eye in the Sky Show podcast. This evening I would like to talk about um, a couple of things actually, but they're both interlinked. The movie The Conjuring and the Perrin family and everything that they dealt with. Um, obviously, as you know, I'm do, doing a lot of research, finding subject matter, and um, this one fell into my lap. And the reason why I started looking into it is because the video that I was watching, the investigate, the investigators in it mentioned that the mother Caroline or Carolyn uh, Perrin had said when they first moved in because they had all said that the spirits there when they first moved in were benevolent and that they were kind and you know the children were reporting getting kisses on the forehead and Caroline had said that she walked into a room where there were two men sitting and one man, one man gestured to the other and pointed at her and they both looked at her and were watching her and she had made the comment that um, to them I was the ghost. And that piqued my interest because that's what I say about time slips. What she experienced was a time slip. She was in their time. They were in her time. They saw her. She saw them. To them, she was the ghost. To her, they were the ghosts. That's a time slip. They were both in the exact same time frequency at the exact exact same time um, in different eras on the same frequency. I will put a link to the video in the description box below. I then started trying to do research to find evidence of this in writing. So I could put a link to the website to show you in writing, you know, in her own words in writing what she'd said, but I couldn't find anything. So you're just going to have to make do with this video. Um, it's a BuzzFeed one, a BuzzFeed Supernatural one. Um, but it is there and that piqued my interest and I started doing research and what I found it just made me so angry it just made me so mad like unbelievably mad not because of the family because basically I'm going to um, condense it all for you if you know the movie The Conjuring um, you'll know that the family in 1970 moved into this house in Rhode Island everything seemed fine at first um, and then all this stuff started happening and they, you know, called in <sighs> Lorraine and um, Ed Warren who then started claiming all these things were going on and they did an exorcism and everything, all the act activity in the house got worse. Now, the reason for this podcast isn't about the Perrin family it isn't about the Conjuring movie other than the fact that I was mortified at the way that people have picked up this story with Bathsheba Sherman um, and run with it in the most salacious disgusting way and the only thing that gave me hope was that I found a woman who who is you know of pure absolute journalistic purity and integrity and wholesomeness who did a lot of research into what was being told about Bathsheba and came up with the same conclusion that I had been thinking all along except she has the evidence to um, disprove everything that has been said about this poor woman and this is why I'm doing the video because Bathsheba Sherman was accused of being a witch and the lies that have run with this poor woman after her death um, is nothing short of abhorrent and people should be ashamed of themselves and this is exactly what Jamie, I believe, I apologise, she's the last link in the description box, Jamie Rubin I think her name is, oh no sorry, Jamie Rubio, props to her like I'm so proud of her, this article is so beautifully written and she has the exact same look on this as I do and that is that the people that have besmirched and smeared this poor woman's name for profit and for fame and, you know, for ticket sales and that is absolutely disgusting because people need to remember 
that this is loosely based on a real family and it is not based on the life of a real woman even though the real woman existed they took this poor woman and they ran with a story that is so bad and so salaciously egregiously shameful that if she was alive today she would be looking at millions in lawsuit for defamation of character and slander and this is something I know all about um, if you go to my Instagram you will see one of my former students um, hiding hiding under a false um, name called Ghost in the Pizza um, Rocio Ray Nunes called me a witch and I was just thinking to myself, and, <laughs> like, thank you, you know, um, and this is why I'm doing these podcasts. This is one of the reasons why it is so important for me to get my work out there, because I need to re-educate people into changing the way that they view witches and witchcraft, because the modern last few hundred year interpretation of what a witch is is so wrong that it not only is destroying the lives of innocent people like myself and Bathsheba because dumb stupid faithless ignorant people have um, such a Neanderthalic um, stone age well not even I can't that's insulting to our Neanderthal and stone age ancestors because they embraced witchcraft <laughs> You know, they they understood it all. They had such a high regard for our ancestors and death and the whole process of life and evolution and reincarnation and that their ceremonies and rituals and that were beautiful. It has been since the birth of religion, the birth of the church and churches having governance over people's spirituality and spiritual growth. That's when the start, trouble started because... They started moving people away from the concept of um, having seers and sages and oracles and witches, you know, um, and wicks and, you know, people like me um, because they had too much control over how people lived a natural, organic um, connection to their gods and ancestors and the church needed to have control over people and they did it by ruling with fear. And because people fear what they don't understand, they started making up these stories and giving people incentives, financial incentives and power incentives and position incentives in order to um, cast these witches out um, and to um, shut them up and shut them down or kill them if they couldn't stop them. And they did it by um, telling st tales of you know, devil worshipping and, and witchcraft and um, black magic and all that and it was all lies and so I have been put on this earth to teach people the truth about witchcraft and what it really is <sighs> okay and this is for all those witches that were killed at Pendle Hill, this is for all those witches that were killed in Salem, and this is for Bathsheba, and this is for every other man, woman and child in Edinburgh and everywhere around the world um, who, were, who had their lives taken, St Joan of Arc, bless her, who had their lives taken for their faith and their practices and their spiritual beliefs and their connection to God and the planet and the ancestors. This podcast is for all of them because I'm going to clear it up here and now. And when I open my store in Canada, the Alchemist Cavern, everything is going to be about the preservation and the, um, the re-education of the true nature of who these people were and why they need to be respected and given um, the credit that they deserve for what they have done for modern man. Because without them we wouldn't have herbalists and apothecaries and um, uh, vitamins and supplements. Without them we wouldn't have um, natural childbirth, you know, women that can have um, have their babies in water and things like that. We wouldn't have any of them. Um, 
we wouldn't we wouldn't have natural burials where people are now choosing to be buried in um, wicker baskets instead of big expensive caskets and coffins you know it's it's for them with which I speak because I also speak for myself because one of the reasons why I was persecuted and condemned is because my indigenous faith and practice um, and so you know now I speak out and um, I want to thank Jamie for doing the right thing and defending the honour of Bathsheba and I hope that I can do everyone justice when I get out there and I'm making my shows, I, I, I desperately want to go to Pendle Hill, I'm going to go to Salem, I'm going to go to Montreal, all these places where these witches were condemned and I'm going to do the right thing and give them the right burials, I'm going to give them proper send-offs and give them the ritual respect that they deserve so that they can cross over freely without being trapped here by scaremongers and paranormal investigators who are obsessed with finding them, trying to trap them on camera, who all these people that go to their places where they suffered such horrendous torture and fear and grief and sorrow on such a deep level that people today keep them trapped here because they want evidence of proof that they existed so that they can mock them and run, you know, scared and, oh, they pinched me, they punched me, they possessed me, they took me over, you know, like it's absolutely ridiculous and shameful. So this is the story. The word witch, W-I-T-C-H, means intelligence or wisdom. Witches of days gone by were multilingual. They could speak multiple languages. They could read and write at a time where, you know, even lawyers and doctors and that couldn't even barely read or write. You know, one of the reasons why the Bible was held in such high regard is that it was actually written. <laughs> You know, because few people could read and write back then. And it was written by people who knew how to write. And it was like, oh, writing back in those days was considered a form of alchemy, let alone being able to speak multiple languages. And in one of my podcasts a little while ago, I was talking about how the Scottish and the Irish absolutely revered their witches to the point where where their witches stayed villages were built around where their witches were because they were so highly respected they solved you know they they were able to read the weather so they could you know protect farmers from you know um, planting crops at the wrong time and you know um, warning them about bad weather that was coming in they knew all the herbs and vitamins and minerals and that to give you to help you with illnesses so they were curing diseases and they would use things like St John's wort um, and then, of course, they get accused, well, they use the water of a man and, you know, um, toad's breath and all this, sort of the breath of a toad and, you know, snake eyes and blah, 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 dragon's blood. And these are all plants. They're the names of plants. But because these people were uneducated and illiterate, they would hear these people speaking in tongues. They would hear them speaking a different language while they were out talking to Father Moon or Mother Sun or, you know, collecting their herbs and, and plants and vegetables to um, give to the villagers in, there in order to help heal them, um, that these people would sneak in and watch them and think, oh, my God, they're talking the devil's language because they had no idea what they were talking about. Um, and all they were doing was speaking a different language or they were using the real Latin names for the plants that they were cultivating. Um, to turn into medicines, quote unquote, potions, you know, they because they were often having to deal with um, outbreaks of illness and diseases and that they would make up big pots and, you know, their cauldrons. And so they would get accused of, you know, concocting these potions to poison people when they were actually, you know, um, apothecaries, you know, they were using natural medicines to help people they were herbalists and apothecaries and you know they would give marital advice to people and they helped deliver babies naturally and painfully painlessly sorry because you know the infant mortality rate was phenomenal back then and you know your your witches your sages your um seers and that they knew how to deliver babies safely 
they knew how to do it where um you know the the safety and the mortality rate was a lot well the safety was higher and the mortality rate was lower because they knew how to do it properly and they got accused of all sorts because the church didn't want them having that kind of control so then you know they brought in the, the army of lies you know god is condemning them and god this and god that you know and the term um wiccan comes from witch but the word witch is derived from the word wick w-i-c-c-e which is the name of my youtube channel wix world which means wick if witch means wise or wisdom or intelligence wick is the indigenous because the indigenous people taught everything that we knew as we migrated to the western world and if you know this the um, history of the victorians they were very big into witchcraft um you know having the herbs and the plants and you know the and it's the it's the western interpretation of witches that went wrong so the word wick w-i-c-c-e means ancient wisdom or knowledge of the ages or wisdom of the ages it means ancient wisdom because we are indigenous we were here first we got it right with our ancestors and we have carried it forward so i am a wick and this youtube channel is wick's world so it is the world it is bringing the knowledge of the ancient wisdoms to the modern world now You can sit here and say God condemns witches, but the understanding of what a witch is is what we see in front of us. People who are ripping crystals out from a living, breathing planet and trying to convince people that they're good for you. They are people who get naked and dance under the moon and howl like wolves. They are people that use spell books. They are people who try to take energy from other people in order to enhance their own magic and power um, or put their energy onto other people in order to have control over them. And that's not what a real witch is. A real witch would never, ever, 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 ever in a million years use a spell book. You will never see me with a spell book. You will never see me use a spell book. Spell books are not good, and I will tell you why. A spell should only ever be used once. A spell book is like um, the more you use the spell, the less energy it has, the less powerful it becomes. So I say to people, Using a spell book is the same as using a single piece of chalk to write the same thing over and over again. Eventually, the more you use the piece of chalk, the sooner the chalk will wear down until it's like a, a nib of nothing and then it just becomes dust and it's useless. That is like, that, that is a spell book. Real witches do not use spell books. Their spells are intuitive. It can take them weeks to come up with the perfect spell and um, the word spell means verbal formula. The word incantation means word for word. The word cast or casting means to place or set there. And the word conjure or conjuring means to gather from nothing. Okay. So we speak what we want to manifest and then we put it out there and it comes back to us on the same frequency with which we send it out. And that's why a witch will keep her vessel pure. They won't drink, they won't smoke, they won't put toxins into their body because everything they send out is of such a high vibration because we are perfectly aware of the fact that we are representing our gods our ancestors on behalf of the planet we are here trying to fine tune everything to get it pitch perfect to get it just right so that the legacy we leave behind is a healing everlasting legacy that um 
resonates for centuries to come. And unfortunately, these poor people like Bathsheba and Joan of Arc and, you know, the witches of Salem and that, the legacy that they left behind has not been a good one because of people's mis- interpretation of what they think a witch is and it's really quite shameful and it's sad because a real witch or you know an indigenous one you can call an indigenous one like a medicine woman or a medicine man or you could call them a um, shaman that would be the closest interpretation the closest modern interpretation of what a wick is would be a, a medicine man or woman or a shaman Okay, and these are people who are in those modern interpretations of it are respected by tourists and by the governments they, they flaunt them about in that. But the second you do it from the scientific, true, historical perspective, everybody runs and screams because they think it's something to fear when it's not. It is, it is a beautiful honour to be able to represent mankind's ancestors for the greater good of the evolution of man's soul as well as for the greater good of the planet because we're trying to show you how to use her to heal you and raise your vibration as well as raise hers, you know, um, in unison um, with our grandmother's um, upbringing as well as their own. Well, she brings us up, we're supposed to bring her up. And Indigenous people are forgetting all of that because we're letting go of our traditional beliefs and understandings and practices to give way to, you know, the modern toxicities of, you know, processed food and alcohol and drugs and smoking and pharmaceutical drugs and you know the Schumann resonance blaring out all over radios and tv and internet and you know all that sort of thing and then they watch these movies like The Conjuring and then they go away thinking all of it is real when in actual fact I'm going to put the links in the description box below other than the last couple of links that I put in there everything that has been written about that house that family and Bathsheba especially um, were nothing but lies. Now, for anybody out there who is religious, for anybody out there who is serving a ministry, for anybody out there that is a Christian or a Catholic or a Jew or a whatever, if you are a minister and you stand and you give these sermons about how witchcraft is sinful and evil, and if you give way, if you give in to the sins of, of the devil, then you know you're a bride of Satan and blah, blah, blah. I've got one thing to say to you, the first book of Samuel. Okay, now the Bible, by its own admittance, is the most supernatural book in the world and it is full of the representation of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ as well as our Heavenly Father, God in Heaven, being a big proponent and defender of the occult, occult practices and witchcraft. When Jesus came along, he told us what not to do. Do not kill these animals. Do not make sacrifices. Give burnt offerings of things like incense and oils instead. Because why are you sacrificing the things that our Heavenly Father already owns? God owns all of this. Why are you killing it to give it back to him? You know, that's what Jesus taught. But God himself was a supporter of witchcraft. And if you don't believe me, then you can look in the first book of Samuel. Um, Saul and the Witch of Endor. First book of Samuel 28. Start from 28.4. The Palestinians assembled and came up and set camp at Shunem, while Saul gathered all the Israelites and set up camp in Gilboa. When Saul saw the Palestinian army, he was afraid. Terror filled his heart. He, in, he inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or Urim or prophets. Saul then said to his attendants, find me a woman who is a medium so I may go and inquire to her. There is one in Endor, they said. So Saul died. Diagnosed. Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothes, and at night he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one I name. 
But the woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul, Saul has done. He has cut off the mediums and spiritualists from the land. Why have you set a trap for my life to bring about my death? Saul swore to her by the Lord and said, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. When the woman then asked, Whom shall I bring up for you? He said, Bring up Samuel. So the Bible himself, the Lord himself, told this woman, if you help Saul conjure the spirit of Samuel, you will not be punished for this. And that is in the Bible. That is the word of the Lord. And the Lord only condemns the ones who are false prophets, the ones who do it in the name of the devil, the ones who um, made sacrifices to Baal and who make sacrifices to Molech and Baphomet, all the same one. He's just the devil in disguise, hence the term. But God himself is in support of the people who do it the right way for the right reason. Therefore, all the churches that put these poor people to death were lying to the people who then turned around to condemn them. And for that, that is now karmic debt that the rest of us have had to pay off. But I am here and I have stood my persecution and I have stood my ground because I understand the real interpretation of it because I am a wick. I see a language in the Bible that nobody else sees. And through that language, through God speaking to me through the Bible, through his own written word, I have been able to decipher the true message of what it is that he is trying to say to people about who you worship and how you worship. And that is what the New Dawn Ministry is all about. Because I am bringing my ancestral knowledge that has been handed down to me from generation to generation to generation to generation. Because a real witch has at least 12 generations. You have to be to be considered in the eyes of the Lord a real bloodline witch um, ancestry. It has to be able to go back at least 12 generations. So if you just became a witch last year or 10 years ago or your mum was a witch, you're not a witch. <laughs> you're going to have to wait, you know, 10 generations down the line for your great, 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 great grandkids to carry on what it is that you handed down to them to be considered in the eyes of the Lord a real witch, a real representative of the wisdom and the knowledge passed down through the ages. And that's just how it is. So for people like poor Bathsheba, where people said she hung herself, that's not true. She died of a stroke. People said that she turned to stone. She was paralyzed from the stroke. There's evidence to suggest she never even was in that house. People said, oh, she didn't have children. Yes, she did. She had four. She outlived three of them. And then her son, um, who became a farmer after she died, um, she was buried next to her husband and her children. She was given a Christian burial. The minister apparently gave her a beautiful eulogy when she died. If she was a witch, if she was a devil worshipper, she would never have been allowed to be buried, given a Christian burial. And that minister and the beautiful write-up for her um, in the newspaper and everything like that would not have existed. But people still ran with that lie because it sold tickets at the movies. It's just... <laughs> It's bad enough that people fear what they don't understand, but when that fear turns them into f fear mongerers and um, sharks who feed off the sacrificial blood of innocent people, they themselves are the devil worshippers. That is the true definition of a devil worshipper, is somebody who feeds off the blood of the innocent. Um, for profit and gain and power and um, supremacy and control. That is the real definition of a devil worshipper. You are worshipping the vices, not the virtues of man. Um, and when you go out of your way to condemn someone that you know, by all intents and purposes, by all historical reports and documents that are out there, um, are contradictory to everything that everybody else is saying 
you are the devil worshipper. You are the one who has fallen um, foul of uh, the devil's lure. And um, so be it on your head. But I'm here standing now speaking up for people like Bathsheba to uh, recorrect the wrongs that have been put out there throughout history of um, the true intentions of somebody, man or woman, who was born with a generational expectation of being able to use the talents and gifts that they were honoured with to be able to do the right thing by man, by animal, you know, by plant, by man, beast, plant, you know, all of it, animal, animal mineral and vegetable, doing the right thing. Um, Bathsheba apparently was a beautiful woman, a really, really beautiful woman whom husband was making good money. They had a lot of land um, and it, it's pretty much just um, co common knowledge now by those who have integrity and, you know, who did their research. The reason why she was picked on is because she was beautiful and these women were jealous, which was often the way with a lot of these witches. It was usually jealousy because they were smart, because they were pretty, because they were talented, because they were gifted, because they, you know, they were born into money and they did wise things with their money and they were independent, independent, strong women. They were independent, strong men. You know, they were educated in ways that people couldn't understand and that was a threat to them. And so, you know, one slight thing went wrong and they would jump on them like, you know, um, a shark sniffing blood and go on a feeding frenzy. You know, and as a result, that poor woman lived until she bought, poor woman lived until she was seventy three, having to deal with the brutal nature of um, people saying that she killed her neighbor's friend, and you know, um, like you know, they're saying, "Oh, she went to trial," and you know, none of this. There's no evidence of any of that, you know. And she she has to live with that. She died at the age of seventy three, and she's still having to live with the fallout of these lies from that people made up about her, just in order to sell books or you know, peer through the window of that house or you know, sell a movie ticket, um, when in actual fact. Um, she had a lot of respect in her community. She was given a good Christian burial. She was laid to rest next to her husband and three children. And um, it was only a handful of bitter women, bitter, jealous women um, who ran with the negative and they weren't even people in her immediate town. Um, and as for the Perrin family, the problem didn't go away when they moved out of the house. And it sounds like a lot of it is made up by the Warrens in order to make movies and that apparently when they did the cleansing, it made the situation worse. And as I keep saying, any stuff that went on in that house, you know, there's no evidence of drownings, murders, suicides, none of it. A woman did commit suicide, but it wasn't Bathsheba. Um, and there's no evidence of any of that that went on in that place at all. Um, and the Warrens just made it worse, which is one of the reasons why I'm out debunking all the stuff that they worked on because they have people like that have instilled fear into children and are making children afraid of things that they have no need to be afraid of. And so, you know, as um, Brahena Sithusa with my books and all that, um, I'm and you know, when I have my Alchemist Cavern, it's going to be a museum and education centre. And this is everything that I'm going to be putting in my store, the Alchemist Cavern. My sons and I were working on the designs for it just the other day. Um, and the services that we will provide there and, you know, how the education centre is going to be and things like that. Um, the Perrin family, from what I understand, um, have fond have a fond attachment to that house to the point where one of them has expressed an interest in wanting to buy it. Um, so not everything is as it seems and the internet has just completely run with a whole set of lies about the Perrin family, about Bathsheba, about the history of the house, about all of it and nobody has even bothered to try and find out the truth other than people like myself and that lovely Jamie Rubio. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. I will put links in the description box below. 
this message is for anybody out there that thinks that they you know, that, that think that witchcraft is bad you know if it like I said if it wasn't for witchcraft we wouldn't have you know like jam for example was was supposed to be you know um a spoonful of sugar have some medicine go down the medicine go down you know that one in the most delightful way Mary Poppins that comes that's a wick practice a spoonful of sugar it was it was a spoonful of honey um it helps you sleep it's um you know it, it helps relax the body and it helps you go into a sleep that's why we say sweet dreams because they would give them a spoonful of honey and then they would go off and have a good sleep and that's where we get the term um the idiom sweet dreams from but a spoonful of honey you know it's a natural antihistamine and this is something that our ancestors from back then gave to us now that we use that you know people were uh, are being condemned for and killed for for knowing and if it wasn't for people like my ancestors passing that knowledge on you know we wouldn't um revere honey the way that we do and cranberries you know for urinary tract infections and like um barley water for urinary tract infections and you know it, like natural yogurt um for thrush and it's like that was all stuff that was handed down from my ancestors to be handed over to yours that um because between the church and now the pharmaceutical industry there's no money in the cure there's no money in saving people's souls um and we never took money for what we did we were paid in kind you know they would give us chickens and they would give us bread and they would um let us live on their land rent free and you know that sort of thing that's how we were paid it was a bartering system that's what I do I barter with people when they want something from me I barter to get something from them it used to be you know you give me a haircut and I will interpret your dreams you um I'm trying to think some of the things that I've been given in exchange for some of my services. Like I'll give you, oh, buy me a kebab and I will um, read your palm. <laughs> you know, like that sort of thing. Because I was homeless and poor and had no money and, you know, like I needed meat desperately because low protein and still recovering from the anaphylaxis effects of, you know, the medication from the hospital and blah, blah, blah. And I was starved and going without food. And so it was like, okay, well, you're buying me kebab, a kebab, so I'm going to do this reading for you. I'm going to read your palm. I'm going to read your tea leaves. I'm going to read your coffee cup, you know, that sort of thing. That's how it's supposed to be, you know, like for like, kind for kind. So um, I'm putting it out there. Um, just logic doubt and reason just please use your common sense don't believe everything you hear don't believe everything you see just because somebody runs around with no clothes on puts fake blood on their face and acts all like spoopy and, and ghoulish and that it doesn't mean they are what they say they are because you know just like Jesus and the Holy Grail the most unassuming people are often the most powerful ones you know so what my ancestors have taught me have helped a lot of very scared single mums give birth to their babies without fear, where they were born having a deep connection to their mothers after they were born because of the work I was able to do for the mother when she was pregnant because I introduced you know I introduced the mum to the baby so she's going to know everything about that child before that child is even born and that established connection that they have during pregnancy you know it cements a bond that these mothers then get to have with their children from the second they're born and they're beautiful relationships and that's because of how I was raised by my ancestors and how to treat um pregnant women and then with the dying the way that I was raised to help the dying you know my sister does it back home in New Zealand the way Māori people are when our when our loved ones or our you know our neighbours and that are getting ready to meet the ancestors you know the things that we do to prepare them for the afterlife and stuff like that as well as my Egyptian ancestors that's because of us being you know medicine men and women and that but as soon as you use the word which everybody runs and screams and they have no idea what it is they're talking about 
because of the the last few hundred years interpretation of what people have been led to believe a witch is and it is it is baseless and untrue and so this is what I'm here for this is why I'm doing all of this because there's so many things that I need to teach on so many levels to so many different people from so many different ages with so many different faiths and belief systems and that that you know eventually I'll drum it into people that this isn't something they need to fear if they're willing to hear the truth and that's what I speak I speak the truth so I'm going to leave you with that I will leave links in the description box below and um, I promise you that when my boys and I get out and make these shows, we're going to go to all these kinds of places. I'm going to go to Salem. I'm going to go to um, Pendle Hill and Edinburgh, you know, um, uh, the, Mid the Cross of Midlothian, the Heart of Midlothian, sorry, where they executed all the people outside of the courthouse. And, you know, a lot of them were done for witchcraft and that. I'm going to go there. I'm going to take my BFG. I'm going to do these ceremonies and that. And I'm going to right some wrongs that um, need to be dealt with um, and then when I build the alchemist cavern I'll have my education centre and I will put everything in there and then I will do my podcast on my radio station and that and put it all out there and then you know people can flock to me as opposed to me having to go to everybody else you know and then who is meant for me won't pass me by you know, so um, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to make a cup of tea because my throat is sore because it has never recovered from that medication. And I am exhausted now, so I will speak to you later. Um, ka kite anō. Mwah!